Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ralph Brown from Zurich in Switzerland, and I'm recording this podcast on structures with histopathologic correlates. The first question that we have to ask us is, what does the clinician really see? If we have a patient in your practice, you look at the lower back, and what you see is a lesion that is clearly different than any other lesion she has. This is what we call the ugly duckling lesion, so a lesion that's different than its brothers and sisters like in the fairy tale from Hans Christian Andersen, the ugly duckling. So these lesions always attract our attention. What do we do? We take out our magnifying glass and take a closer look at the lesion. In clinical examination, we could see that there are different colors and that are, it's an irregular lesion that is irregular in shape, but we can't tell much more. Next question is, what does the dermoscopist see? Using dermoscopy, we use a handheld magnifying glass that allows us to look under the skin surface and to enhance the structures that we see, similar to histopathological examination. Using dermoscopy on the same lesion, we see many colors and structures. For example, we can see blue-white whale, irregular dots and globules, pseudopods, so many structures that have not been visible with the naked eye examination. Next question is, what does the pathologist see? This is the, these are all the histological slides that the histopathologist has from this case. At first glance, it, this looks a lot, but let's take a closer look what that really means. On the left side, you see the corresponding histopathological slides, all of them, and on the right side, the lesion. So, what happens? The lesion is excised under local anesthesia, and then, in the laboratory, it's cut in different pieces. And every of these different pieces can be found on a different slide of the histopathology. So, they're represented here. Then again, every piece is cut into two different depths, A and B, and so on and so on. So, it corresponds approximately to 2-5% to of the lesion. The histopathologist sees at low power an irregular, asymmetric, melanocytic lesion. He sees pagetoid spread in the epidermis and makes the diagnosis of a melanoma. We have dermoscopy criteria and we have the diagnostic criteria for histopathology. There are some that are only accessible with dermoscopy and there are some that are only accessible with histopathology. But there's a big overlap and this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the criteria that are accessible both by dermoscopy and histopathology. So, dermoscopy provides an horizontal overview of the entire lesion. And histopathology gives you a vertical but very focal view, but is still considered to be the gold standard. In histopathology, you see even single cells. In dermoscopy, you see globules, which means clusters of cells. So you don't see the single cells. Dermoscopy cannot show you single cells, but the cell clusters and the distribution of cell clusters. As mentioned previously, the color is very important in dermoscopy. Just the color tells you what you see and where exactly in the lesion it is located. Let's take the example of melanin. Melanin is an important chromophore of the skin. If melanin is located in the stratum corneum, it appears black in dermoscopy. If the same chromophore is a little deeper in the upper parts of the epidermis, it appears to be brown. And if melanin is found in the dermis, it appears blue to gray in dermoscopy. Let's take this histopathological slide where we see many melanin containing spindle-shaped cells in the dermis. And if we go back to dermoscopy and if this concept was true, we should see a blue lesion because we have melanin in the dermis. This is exactly what we do. This is the picture, the, the corresponding dermoscopy picture of a blue nevus, homogeneous blue pigmentation. We're going to talk about the different dermoscopy criteria and the histopathological correlation. So we're first going to talk about melanocytic lesions, so criteria for melanocytic lesions, pigment network, dots, globules, etc. Then the diagnostic criteria for basal cell carcinoma, for seborrheic keratosis, 
angioma, angiocarantoma, and the blood vessels.